Yo, how cool is this? I'm watching my participant bar on the screen right now and just seeing that number grow higher and higher. We have about 50 folks that have dialed in and registered for this call. Um, how cool is this? Our fall volleyball virtual program update. Uh, Coach Smart, so thrilled <laughs> to have you on this call. Jake Page, appreciate you all joining in. Uh, and all the, the familiar faces out here joining us. Um, appreciate you all for, for joining us for this time. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet many of you, I think. For those I haven't, my name is Gerard McMahon, and I'm an assistant athletic director with the Deacon Club. I've had, a, I've had the great privilege of working with Coach Smart in the volleyball program and representing our student athletes for the last few years. Um, so a couple of quick uh, house notes as we're still seeing that number of participants growing. Um, if everyone could ensure that you mute your phone line, that will just help us uh, avoid background noise and make sure that we're able to focus in on what each speaker is saying. Um, we also have received a number of questions uh, in advance of this call, so we'll address those questions specifically so we won't open the chat box as well, uh, just to allow us to dial in on those questions that were asked in advance. But without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn the conversation over to our athletic director, John Curry. John, I know you have a call coming up in just a few minutes here. Uh, you've been staying busy these last few weeks and months. Gerard, I paid close attention when you told me that I had to mute my phone, and uh, so, <laughs> so I, that 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 calls me to uh, uh, be delayed here a minute. Uh, but first of all, thank you, Gerard uh, uh, and Annie, for organizing this call and putting this together. It is great to see all the attendees that are dialing in. Um, it is a, almost a year ago, exactly right, that we made uh, the decision uh, to name Randy Smart uh, as our head volleyball coach uh, when we. Uh, when I told Coach Smart that we had made that decision, that she had earned it. Um, I also told her that uh, she's my first head coaching hire at Wake Forest, right? And so I'm forever going to be judged on her success and this program's success. And so that means we're doing everything we can uh, for our student athletes to give them great support. And I would say a year later, um, every decision, uh, every uh, moment as we've moved along uh, under Randy's leadership has validated that uh, that decision uh, for the committee that made that decision. And uh, we were very pleased um, that uh, with, the, with the staff additions, uh, adding uh, Mr. Hong to Mrs. Hong uh, on our coaching staff. It's been great. We got a new addition, new baby and everything like that. Um, I'm excited about our class that has arrived here. Uh, and it's also very encouraging. I just came back from walking over to the pit uh, to get a little dinner. And by the way, I think students at Wake Forest eat better than any students in America. It's amazing. It's like a gourmet restaurant in there every single day. Uh, and our pit workers are doing a fabulous job of taking good care of our students amidst, amidst COVID. Uh, but I see our athletes going back and forth uh, every day. And uh, I passed a volleyball player on my way back and, you know, masked up and everything like that. So I'm grateful to all of our uh, student athletes for taking so seriously this uh, the, the extra um, uh, uh, guidelines and restrictions we have in this process. A couple things I, I want to just mention, um, and then I do have to jump back onto this ACC Athletics Directors call, which started at noon, but I really wanted to be part of this call as well. So um, first of all, um, we, are, we, we have had some actual college athletics competitions uh, already. Uh, we've had two soccer games and one uh, American football game uh, over the last three days. Um, it has been incredibly uh, uh, exciting to see our student athletes back doing what they love to do, which is compete. Uh, we really came through the pandemic with three principles for, for Wake Forest Athletics. Uh, principle number one is we were going to be as safe as we possibly could be. Principle number two is uh, we wanted to provide some competition opportunities for our student athletes. And principle number three is uh, we were going to make tough decisions to sustain our enterprise. And uh, our, our whole department has really uh, pulled together uh, through this. We've had great support from the community, from our Deacon Club members, parents, uh, faculty, you name it. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, the second thing I want to mention is we, we have been able to um, uh, uh, make a decision that we're going to move our competitions uh, for volleyball from uh, Varsity Arena in Reynolds Gym to uh, Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Uh, we did that for a number of reasons, uh, but one of which is it's a much bigger space, which allows for much more social distancing um, and another reason is that enables us to not have to go through the, the extra degree of uh, uh, compl com complexity in bringing visiting teams onto campus, uh, which is, as you can imagine, 
Uh, we're really lucky here at Wake Forest. We can kind of control who comes in on and off our campuses uh, and not having to have that extra complexity makes it a little bit easier to operate. Uh, so that's where we'll be in the Joel uh, Coliseum. That offers some benefits. Uh, you know, we got an awesome scoreboard and sound system and from an experience standpoint for our student athletes, it can be a lot of fun. Um, it will also be uh, easier uh, and leading to my next comment is regarding fans and the stands. As you know, the state of North Carolina, um, under Secretary uh, Mandy Cohen's leadership has made the determination that mass gatherings are still limited to, uh, in phase 2.5, to 50 outdoor spectators and 25 indoor. So that is the cap that we have right now. So at our football game on Saturday, um, and this doesn't count the band and the players and things like that, but we had exactly 50 fans outside in the bowl and we had a handful inside in the tower. And so uh, we, we are able to have fans at volleyball. Um, it'll start at 25 and um, we'll have to, we'll hopefully as we move along, this, this benefit of not playing for a couple of weeks gives us a little bit more time, hopefully for that uh, max gathering limitation to be expanded. Um, just as it was going from phase two to phase 2.5 by the governor uh, when it expanded from 10 to 25. So we know that's, uh, that creates a lot of anxiety, especially for parents and family members uh, who want to be there uh, for their student. Um, and uh, the, the, I guess the silver lining is we've got a great ACC network broadcasting capacity now, and we'll be, we'll be able to do almost all those games. So you can see them even if you can't see them inside uh, the arena. So uh, the very last thing I want to mention, and then I do have a question for Coach Smart about actual volleyball, is I would encourage folks to continue to look at the uh, university's dashboard um, and the dashboard on the uh, university's uh, Our Way Forward site or the main WFU.edu site does have kind of a rolling number of cases uh, on our campus um, as they're diagnosed. And you will see that those have gone up a little bit in the last couple of days. Um, on the dashboard, it's still a relatively low number. But one of the reasons it's gone up is that uh, the university has started doing surveillance testing, um, you know, testing two or 300 people kind of randomly, uh, trying to identify um, potential infections and then isolate them. Uh, and also, they're also testing some specific areas where they, if they feel like there's been an outbreak, uh, outbreak in a group or uh, like a fraternity or something like that, they can cobble all those people and test them and then get them quarantined and all that kind of stuff. I think it's going exceptionally well. Now, it is complex, right? And these are all new protocols, but since we're a month into the semester now, um, you know, those protocols are getting refined and, and I believe we're, we're still on a good track. Another very significant thing that you can notice uh, from that tracker is that I did, it separately identifies faculty and staff from students. Um, and to date, uh, since August 17th, according to the website, uh, there have been no cases reported among faculty and staff, which is extraordinarily positive uh, because of the ability of faculty and staff to feel like they can teach in a classroom safely or work in the cafeteria safely or coach their team or tape ankles safely is a big part of us being able to continue uh, with in-person learning uh, here at Wake Forest. So with that, Coach Smart? Yes, sir. How's our team? Our team is doing well. Uh, they're alive and kicking. Um, thank goodness that Jake is counting the junk counts because we are working their tails off, and uh, and they seem they seem to be doing really well. Excited to be on a court. That's our north, right? That's where we love to be, and that's where things make the most sense. So it's nice being with them. Amen. Well, I believe for all of us, um, even those grizzled veterans like me, you're not quite so grizzled, coach, but me. Um, you know, a lot of things that we maybe took for granted. And I think that's you know, our athletes as well, you know, their, their first team meeting and you know, stuff that they thought maybe weren't going to happen this year. It's, it's definitely from my perspective, given all us, all of us a, a greater appreciation, uh, including our student athletes. And that's, that's rewarding to see. Uh, Gerard, I'm going to go to the ACC call and, uh, and, and, and join that group. But um, I know this will be a very informative call. I look forward to hearing more about it. And if anybody has any questions or thoughts or suggestions for me, uh, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email or give me a call. Thanks and go Deeks. Thanks, John. John, appreciate it. And I think this is speaking on behalf of, of Coach Smart and Coach Hong and Paige, and we're all just certainly appreciative of John's leadership. I'll tell maybe a, a quick story that I didn't want to tell before. Um, John was on the call. He'd accuse me of being a kiss up. 
But this is really a good story that kind of speaks to John's leadership during this time. Um, and Randy, Jake, you were all were probably part of this call I'm going to reference. It was a staff call probably a month or two ago. Um, I think we had all kind of hit the, the quarantine blues a little bit. Um, we were all just craving that interaction and wanting to get back onto the, onto the quarter, into competition and getting to the start of the school year. Um, and we were still facing, you know, John kind of referenced some of the um, strategic decisions that we've made as a department and some of the belt tightening we've gone through as part of the department. And I think he was looking at his Zoom screen and he just saw a lot of, um, a lot of big eyes, and a lot of long faces, and he stopped conversation and issued a challenge to all of us. And he said to everyone, you know, there's going to be a point at some point, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, 20 years from now, when a neighbor, a kid, a grandkid is going to approach us and they're going to be reading about uh, these summer months and they're going to say, man, this, this sounded really tough. This was really hard. This, you really couldn't see anyone. You were really locked inside. However, they phrased that question. And he said, there's two ways that we could then proceed with that conversation. We could either kind of nod our heads and say, yeah, it's stunk. It was, it was brutal. It was tough. Or we could change the way we approach the conversation and say, you know what? We found a new way to overcome. We found a way to bring people together during this time and build our relationships and personally reached out to uh, friends and family members that I hadn't been able to engage with before and find new counterparts across campus, across business lines, where we were able to build something sustainable and new together. And that's a challenge that he issued on all of us. And I know I, for one, was incredibly appreciative of, of having that challenge issued. And I think across the department, we were all, um, it hit home for many of us and uh, kind of established a new normal of how Wake Forest Athletics was progressing through these summer months. And now we're here. We're in the, in the month of September and getting to the point where we're able to get out on the court and into competition. And you know, I've been trying to read over Coach Smart's, I think, left shoulder there, the uh, size 2.5, and I'm trying to get inside the program and try to understand. I thought maybe John was going here, but you know, I want to know what's actually going on within the program. So what the heck is written on that whiteboard behind you? Can you share if it's, if it's you know, information that we don't want to get out? Let's not share it, but I want to know what's going on within the program. Uh, yeah, so you can't, like, the whole thing goes away, goes a little higher. Um, we've got a quote up there about culture driving everything, right? Um, expectations, beliefs, uh, just your culture and who you are. We've got a court drawn by Jake Hong. So Jake's courts and my courts are very different. Um, Jake's courts, like, he does the full court. I'm more of a half court kind of gal um he's got the small capitals and might tend to be a little bit thicker he's that wider pin but we've got some we've got to be better at hard driven volleyballs we got to get uh some defense versus uh uh front row setter so it's just game plans for the week if you will gerard um the fun stuff is what happens when becky jake and i throw something on that board and it gets crossed out and erased and we get in here um they are like the honest to goodness i've known jake forever and we're we're really close staff so when we disagree on things it's funny but if a person walks in from the outside they're like do they like each other or are they totally fighting and we don't know either so um this board gets erased a lot lot and it's a lot of fun i'm like a kid i get to work with my best friends and they challenge me every day and and we throw things and jake asked me why all the time i feel like i'm with tyler when he was a two-year-old and then i throw it at jake why why are we doing that why are these arm swings looking like that so um it's fun this is besides being with Paige, i got to make sure that she feels like included um this is my happy place you know, but that is a little bit crazy because I do have teenagers that are homeschooling. So I think like the dentist office right now would be my happy place. So, but this is my happy place for sure with people that I care about. Well, I don't know what's uh, what's a better home situation, the homeschooling of the teenagers at home or Jake, you're going home and I hope you're getting good night's sleep now with, uh, with your family of three coming along. I also appreciated how Randy kind of immediately pointed out that it was Jake's rectangle on the whiteboard behind her, just in case anybody had any, uh, any drawing challenges. I think my, my five-year-old's learning rectangles in school right now, and maybe he can start drawing the court as well up on that whiteboard. Yeah, he, um, he, 
good for me. My, my rectangles were not very good. Yeah, a little crooked, a little small, lopsided. <laughs> yeah. I got to imagine, Jake, for you, the, uh, for the Hong family, uh, getting back on the court, uh, in addition to what's going on at home, it's been a, a welcome respite for you and uh, probably allowed for an outlet of some, some enthusiasm and excitement as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's been great. Uh, again, it's, it's been, like Randy said, it's, it's been great to just be back. Um, you know, again, we've, we've done a lot of Zoom meetings just like we're doing right now. Um, we've, we've talked to each other a lot as a team, as a staff, um, but to be back on the court and actually put in a lot of the words that we talked about these past five months into action um, has been a lot of fun. You know, and again, it's, it's been a lot of just getting back into the groove of um, trying to play volleyball again uh, for, for some of these girls that, again, had, had, haven't played six on six in a while. And as coaches, too, it was, it, was, it was interesting not being able to coach for that long. That's the longest period I've gone without actually being on a volleyball court and actually coaching a team. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been great. And it's been a lot of fun to just to um, work with Randy, work with Becky, and, um, again, make, make the players and make the team where we want to go and, and how we want to play. So it's been great. We're talking about getting back on the court and Paige, that's really what all of our questions, I think probably 80% of the questions that we received in advance were all really directed at you. So no, no pressure not to put you on the spot. Um, but th that was the intent of the questions is just, what was the transition been like going from uh, going home back in March, having a summer that was probably unlike any summer for you as an athlete, but now getting back into the field of competition and getting back uh, into that team environment as well and how you all have been able to come together over these past few um, weeks. Um, so it's a lot of questions, but basically boils down to what's it been like getting back into competition for you and the rest of the team. It's been awesome just getting back on the court. You know, you can only pass a volleyball against your garage so many times before you just want to throw it over the fence. Um, so just being able to be back on the court and actually compete, you know, we were putting the work in, but there was no result, you know, we didn't get to compete. Um, so being back on the court is like the biggest breath of fresh air that we could ask for right now. It was definitely tough at the beginning, just, you know, getting adjusted and having to play with masks on <laughs> was tough. But I, I think at this point, we're just all ready to go, you know, two weeks playing against Clemson cannot come fast enough. We get to scrimmage on Fridays. And I know I speak for all of us when I say that that is what we look forward to every week in practice. And we're getting, you know, we're able to work on the fun stuff. Now we get to work on like our systems and our offense and our schemes. So it's been amazing, you know, getting to be back on the court and be with everyone. And like Randy said, it's where everything feels the most normal. You know, you're in online school, you're doing this and that, but on the court, you know, besides the masks, everything just feels normal and that's where you're just ready to go to work. So we're talking about masks and, you know, for all the former players on this call, for all the parents who have been part of uh, athletics for our whole lives, so much of uh, competition and so much of teamwork is communication on the court. And I've got to imagine that um, wearing a mask just presents a different kind of communication than some of the, the, both vocal cues and non-vocal cues that you'd pick up on typically in competition just become a little bit more of a challenge when you're wearing a mask. Maybe, um, Coach Smart, what's it like coaching wearing a mask and uh, <laughs> trying to still communicate the, the messaging to the team? And I think it always sounds a little bit muffled when we're all staring behind a mask. So um, what's that been like for you trying to adjust to the, the mask wearing on the sidelines? A um, couple things. I've had to find my deeper voice because that high pitch in there with a mask, it, forget it. And I and the kids already, and Paige can nod her head. Like, Paige will give me, like, we talk a lot like this. Hi, Beck. Uh, we do a lot of this. How are we doing? Are we here, here, or here? And, uh, you know, they. it feels like we're the teacher in the peanuts, you know? Like, just wah, 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 and the kids are like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, but you get to, like, to get to go talk to them and actually you're talking one-on-one -on -one because a lot of it's just going to be that that way to communicate on a court so you got to get pretty close to them so you you got to stop drills sometimes to go get things done versus you know usually you can just stand back and just yell at kids the other thing that i noticed and one of the freshmen pointed out to me um you get in there and and i, I do lie about that decade on my driver's license and i have to lie about it now every time i take a stinking covid test about my birthday so 
um, with that decade on my driver's license, my back isn't what it used to be. So I stand with my arms crossed and a couple of the kids said, it just looks like you're mad at us because your arms are crossed. Cause all they're seeing is this, you know, with my arms crossed. So I said, okay, let, you know, I gotta, I gotta uncross my arms. I gotta be really aware about my body language. Um, cause that's, that's just kind of what we're doing right now is we're looking at body language. I've encouraged, you know, some of the kids like have a good, have a good time. You got to show that you're having a good time with, with your eyes. We can't high five. So, you know, high elbow, high feet. Um, it's just really made us think about how we do things a whole lot differently. And, and Becky, Jake, and I just have to be really efficient because we don't, we don't want to stop the drills much. Cause like Paige said, they love playing. Um, we love talking as you can see. So, uh, those masks have just made us be a lot more efficient page. Yes. <laughs> so how do you translate that onto the court then Paige, when you're, you know, surrounded by teammates at all wearing masks as well? Um, have you adapted your communication styles on the court? Are you finding ways that you can still uh, persevere <laughs> through the mask wearing? Well, so I credit my mom for this, but I've never really had a problem being loud ever. Um, I've kind of had my deeper voice for a little bit now, but it's made me so much more aware of my body language. And like people talk a lot about smiling with your eyes. And before this, I was like, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. But now I'm like, I have to, or someone's going to think I'm angry at them. But it really just makes you be a lot more intentional with how you even just walk up to someone, like which way your shoulders are pointing, which way your feet are pointing, like if you're crossing your arms or not, because you've, we started to realize that it all makes a lot more of a difference than it ever has before. And then also, you know, when the music's off and you're going to get water, like going up to a teammate and talking to them to bring some sort of normalcy to that and just establishing a normal line of communication. So it's definitely a combination between, you know, having a balance and just being intentional with how you're approaching your teammates and your coaches. You know, we have about maybe um, 10 minutes or so left, and I, I want to make sure we're getting to a lot of these questions that were passed along in advance. Um, I mentioned about 80% of those questions were, Paige, about getting back to competition. Um, a couple of recruiting questions, but I want to just dial into, um, you know, this is for Coach Smart and, and Jake and Becky. You know, you're putting together a, a team, um, building competition, building out a roster, preparing for a season all in a bit of a condensed time frame here. Talk for a little bit, if you can, about um, just what it's been like building that team. And um, I'd imagine maybe you lean on some of the upperclassmen to help bring along some of the freshmen and uh, <laughs> allow those freshmen to understand what ACC competition is all about. You know, talk maybe a little bit just about what it's like building a team in a, a condensed time frame like that. Yeah, we've really relied on the on the returners. Um, and we've got so many that have been here now for four years. Um, that are established, that know what's going on. So the, the drills that we set up are intentional. Um, I actually pointed out to, I think it was, um, we have a freshman setter on one side of the court that we put the senior libero with. Um, and then we put the, the freshman libero with the senior setter. So there's a lot of times that we're mixing and matching and, and telling the upperclassmen, okay, you're not gonna learn too much more about volleyball right? It's your senior year. If you haven't learned it by now, shame on all of us, but uh, you guys are good. Let's, let's go be intentional with your interactions with, with the younger ones and, and talking about, hey, I know you think you're working hard, but I got to get you to narrow your focus right here for, for this drill. Um, and I think, I think the returners are enjoying it. I mean, you have so much personality in, in these classes and a lot of different personalities that they're finding a way they're, the seniors are now figuring out how to listen to learn um, instead of listen to react so that the seniors have done just a really nice job of okay so you got some freshmen who are you know what's this like and what's this and how are we going to travel or you know what's the pit like like eating in the eating in the dining hall and and the seniors you just see a I mean Paige will get mad at me but 
um, a softer side to a Paige Sebesta in terms of, I tell you, those Paige is pretty intimidating. Um, I love her for sure, but she's intimidating on a court. The freshmen think the world of her. They tease her. They laugh with her, and it, it's just such a, it's such a tribute to Paige um, and, and to all the seniors. I mean, the freshmen have never. I've never gotten so many freshmen to say, man, I just really love what's going on. Usually the freshmen, like their heads are blowing up, right? I've got school and I'm kind of homesick, but I don't want to say it. But um, I just think that the seniors are doing a fantastic job. Well, and all of them. Agreed. Really. Yeah, Paige, it's a great testament to you and, and your classmates of really finding ways to build that camaraderie um, when maybe, and maybe you're finding ways to do this, but maybe you don't have the, the big table at the pit where you're set up and you're able to hang out for an hour at a time. Um, are there, are there certain things that you've been able to find that have allowed you to build that, um, camaraderie, you will keep using that word with the underclassmen, uh, bringing those new freshmen into the team environment. Yeah, I'd say definitely just, you know, the locker room is a big thing. That's one of the few places where we're not always being looked at. So we don't have to, you know, be six feet apart, don't talk to each other. And we have like 20 minutes in between lift and practice every day, where you just kind of have time if you want to just sit and like recover and talk to each other. And that's, I think, all of our favorite time of the day, because we'll just, you know, oh, how's your day going? How are your classes going? Like, oh, that happened? That sucks. Now let's move on. Um, and then at least one day every weekend, we try to get the whole team together, whether it's lunch, dinner, like whatever it may be, a movie, um, just in one of our houses over here and just, you know, hang out, get to know each other a little bit better. You definitely have to be a lot more intentional. You know, you're not passing them on campus. You can't just grab lunch with them at the pit because it's so hard, but it helps that they're all just like amazing people. You know, I really do love all of them. And like, Randy's going to tease me after this because she's going to tell me that I'm soft but they are like, they're great people. And I think all of the seniors just want to kind of reinvest in the program. You know, we've all been through a lot of changes these past four years. We know that most of us only have one or two more years left if we get that eligibility. And so we just want to leave the place better than we found it. And we're kind of seeing that the younger kids are the future of that. So we're just trying to reinvest in them and love on them and see where they can go. That's so well said. Randy, one of the questions we've gotten, and this is kind of following up on Paige's point. I mean, how do we find the next Paige Sebesta? What do you look for as you're going out on the recruiting trail, which is a little bit different right now, I'm sure. Um, but the questions come in, the most recent one here from Jesse Golden. Um, you know, what do you look for in a player and understanding the right fit for your program? Uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, June 15th was the first time that we could talk to the, they were rising juniors at the time. Um, so I tell you, Becky, Jake, and I um, were on, I don't know, Jakey, like eight hours a day of Zoom calls. Um, at, at that point, we know that they're good volleyball players, right? Like you're, you're watching kids just the way we, you know, we went and, and watched Olivia Frankie and then sat, you know, behind Ruth and, you know, you see all the parents, you're sitting behind them. What we really want to see is what are they like? Um, and the Zoom calls, actually, I, I'm not going to discount those from here on out because um, you can see the home life. I mean, you can see what's going on. You can see the interactions that they have with people. Um, so it's it's been it's been fantastic. We actually have two commits for the 22 class. Um, we've never met them in person and they've never met us in person. So we're, we're on a Zoom call with them once a week for an hour. And uh, we feel like we we get to know them really, really well. And just asking questions. Um, and the three of us are so different in our personalities, but so similar in what we want for this program that it's fun when the three of us get together and just like throw th again on my board right we just write a name and go okay personality leadership skills is she the right fit for our program um so it's we've actually spent a lot more time talking about that than volleyball with these kids to be honest and and jake's the most patient out of it like Becky and I are like let's get this done let's go let's go let's be finished and Jake's like you guys slow down so it's it's just a good combination so that we can keep finding you know the page the bestas that are soft 
<laughs> like how we still got that dig in on page. Way to go there. Um, Y'all, maybe we just have a, a few more minutes here. Um, I'll go back to a comment that John made at the, at the start of the conversation. Um, as he talked about making those smart business decisions and some of the, the belt tightening we've undergone at the department. And he referenced Deacon Club members who had continued to step up. And you know, it's, it's only appropriate to kind of pause the conversation here and thank so many of you on this call who have been supportive of our student athletes um, vocally, um, <laughs> online, on social media, financially, most recently with a, an extremely successful giving day effort, um, primarily from individuals in this, in this call. Um, thank you all from all of us within the athletic department, within the volleyball program, y'all are making an unbelievable difference in how we're able to plan, how we're able to project. For the, I don't know why I'm the one having this conversation. Randy, this is better coming from you. Um, and maybe if you don't mind, um, spend a moment just reflecting a little bit on the impact um, of specifically those giving day contributions and um, maybe how it addresses both short-term needs for the program and perhaps also leads into some long-term solutions for some of the, the longer term visions you have for the program as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys, the ones on the call of you guys have been so fantastic in giving. Um, we are, it's been an interesting year uh, to say the least in terms of what travel looks like like and budget looks like and are you traveling and and buying face masks and and you know getting getting different we're at 15 or 50 percent capacity for buses now when we go so just the financial implications that have come with this year um have really taken a toll on what we want to do long term so i can't thank all of you enough for your support um for this program we definitely want to go forward with this and it's so nice that you guys are helping out so that we do have a future. Um, Jenny Cheris started the ball rolling with us um, with giving and, and um, establishing a fund so that we can have a long term program, a long term successful program. We are, we're behind in the ACC in terms of how we, you know, how we have a staff and and uh, we're missing a couple, a couple people in the office. We could use a technical coordinator. We could use a director of operations so that you know, the three of us can coach and, and manage and, and do all the stuff that, um, that we want to do and, and keep this program going forward. So all the, co the contributions that go to that, um, man, it's, it's amazing and powerful. And we just thank you so much. I, I mean, Becky and Jake can talk on this, but this is a program that, uh, you know, academically, it's a top 27 school in the country. The facilities are state of the art. We've got stability in this program. Um, and now we want to be in the, you know, we want to make the tournament at the end of the year. We want to be on ESPN. We want to get in the top 25. That's the way we're going. Um, so all the, all the help financially that, that you guys, that you guys give just help us get there. Well, I wish I had planned this. If I was a good development officer, I would have. Um, I actually just got a text about it. The too late to support from Giving Day. And fantastic question, first of all. Secondly, the answer is no, it is not. Um, if you do visit DeaconClub.com, there's an opportunity within DeaconClub.com to direct support to the volleyball program, directly address some of those uh, short-term uh, challenges around PPE, uh, travel, uh, making sure we're de-densifying our group. Um, thank you for that support. Randy mentioned, Coach Smart mentioned, uh, Ginny Charis creating an endowment to solve longer term um, staff challenges and provide for additional staffing support. Um, certainly a conversation that um, anyone here within the athletic development office would uh, love to engage in a, in a larger conversation on if there are any specific questions, thoughts, follow-ups to that. Um, you know, maybe in, in closing down here, and uh, another question that had come in for Paige was about how you balance classes and matches, especially during competition season. I think part of that answer is having athletic staff not keep you on Zoom calls too long and letting you get back to your studies and academics, so I'm going to adhere to that advice and let you get back to the studies. Um, but do want to allow for uh, 
a final word, so to speak, from Randy. And if you want to, Randy, defer to Becky or Jake or Paige, feel free to. Um, but I'll kind of summarize or sum up my point. Just, again, appreciate all the, the vocal support, the financial support, the backing you have of our student athletes, uh, allowing Paige and our other athletes the opportunity to pursue really a world-class student athlete experience to Randy's point about the academics and the competition, the facilities. Uh, it's, it's individuals on this call who are providing that background. So appreciate all of you. I'm going to stop talking now and Randy will allow you to, to close us up and enjoy the last word here. Yeah. Thanks everyone who's on here. Um, it's fun. It's hard not seeing all your faces right now, but, um, you know, I see, I see pe parents that are here from the past, parents that have kids here that are currently here, uh, maybe even a couple future players. Um, thank you guys. Thanks for trusting in us. Thanks for believing in what we're doing. Um, and we can't wait to see you on the court. We can't wait to get you guys in the stands uh, and show you what we've been working on. And just thanks for, thanks for everything you guys do. Um, honestly, it takes a village. And I'm going to let uh, Paige, Becky, Jakes, if they got something to say, uh, you can hear a little bit from our village. Thank you all, you guys. Can't wait to see you out there. Yeah, we just hope that you guys are all just as excited as we are because we're ready to go. We hope you'll get to be in the stands. If not, we'll figure something out, control what we can control, but we're so ready to go. Yes, just thank everyone so much for your support. I, I know Jake and I, with getting to join Randy in this program, have been just unbelievably impressed with these 20 um, young women in this program. They Just who they are is unbelievable. Um, you're supporting um, young women who are amazing people. You mean like first and foremost, and um, they, they just impress us on a daily basis just with that. And so on top of that, we get to be on the court with them and they go after it and they work hard and they compete and they've grown tremendously in that regard, you know, and a large part due to the upperclassmen and their leadership and, and the direction that they've taken this program over time. Um, and so we are just, we're so grateful that you all give to this program and give to these 20 young women and the staff and believe in what, what we're doing every single day. So we're just very grateful to be a part of it. Um, and getting to be in their lives and your lives. So thank you. Thank you to all. <laughs> Paige, so proud of you, your teammates, representing us alumni, fans, supporters. Um, you represent us so well. Appreciate all you do. Randy, Jake, Becky, appreciate you guys, all those who dialed in. Y'all are the best. Thank you. Go Deeks. Thanks, Gerard. Thanks, Annie. Go Deeks.